politics for more than 20 years or around 20 exactly years. 20 years. Exactly 20 years. Exactly 20 years. Did you get into it because you felt strongly about democracy? Why did you get into it? I joined Israel politics because my understanding and my vision for the state of Israel is that there's a need to keep its values as a Jewish democratic state. And in order to do so, we need to achieve peace in the Palestinians based on the idea of two states for two peoples. And therefore, I joined politics. Uh, this was the main reason. This was my motivation to join politics. But later, uh, in the last years in Israel, I saw in Israel what's what I see in the entire world. And this is an erosion in the nature of Israel as a democracy. And uh, so my last years in politics was not only uh, fighting for peace, but also fighting for Israel as a democracy. So what's happened in Israel over the last 20 years and how is that reflected around the rest of the world? Basically, what's happening in Israel, you can see in other parts of, of, of the world. We, we, we have uh, changes in the nature of democracies. Uh, for many years, it was well understood that democracy means not only majority, majority rules, but a set of values. Uh, rule of law, uh, equal rights. Uh, it's not only system of election, but it's a matter of values. And um, when I look at the world and I see that uh, more populistic leaders uh, taking over, uh, lack of understanding what does it mean to be a democracy, there is an erosion on, on something that we all believe that this is the right vision and the right values uh, as citizens of the world, not only as Israelis. And the obvious that was there for more than 70 years six, uh, since Second World War um, is being eroded. So are you saying that Israel is less of a democracy today than it was 20 years ago? There are some changes in Israel uh, that we need uh, to stand and to fight for. In the last few years, you could hear the Israeli justice minister saying that uh, democracy is a uh, majority rules, uh, not set of values. Uh, you see uh, the prime minister attacking the free press, uh, law enforcement, uh, the police, uh, the Supreme Court. So this worries me. But I am worried now not only as an Israeli citizen, I am worried as a, as a citizen of the world. In a way, I believe that liberals of the world should unite and fight for it. But hasn't Israel been one of the great beneficiaries of globalization? You're one of the, the most innovative countries in the world. You have one of the most dynamic startup communities. People call Israel the startup nation. It is. Uh, it's rich with technologists, with venture capitalists. Why are people so desperate for strong leaders in a country like Israel? Maybe maybe in the Midwest, in, in the United States, or in the northern part of deindustrializing England, but Israel's different, isn't it? Well, Israel is a startup nation uh, because we have all this innovation and entrepreneurs and startups, and this is really great. And I'm very proud that Israel is uh, really a state that can and is contributing to the entire world by being a startup nation. But yet Israel is a state that for many years, since day one, since its establishment is uh, under threats, uh, whether it's, it's Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, all the fundamental fundamentalists in the region are talking about uh, Israel as the enemy. And um, uh, this is also something that is connected to the history of the Jewish people. Uh, most of the Israelis would feel that we are still the victims uh, of the world. And uh, um, I think that this affects uh, the way they also vote, looking for a strong leader that would defend us from our enemies. I mean, Israel was founded by very strong leaders, but who were also on the left. And, and the, the early history of Israel, of course, is, is very much bound up with a kind of communal socialism. That left, and you know this as well as anyone now, is in crisis. Is there a connection between what seems to be the crisis of liberal democracy today and the crisis of the center left? Well, you know, 
you are talking about the day that Israel was established. Uh, I grew up in a home, my family, my, both my parents were freedom fighters. My uh, father was a member of Likud, of, uh, I mean, Begin, participated in my uh, parents' wedding the same day Israel was established. Uh, and um, I believe that I represent the, the same values that I was graduated upon and educated upon. The meaning is that Israel is a nation state of the Jewish people with equal rights to all its citizens, and our responsibility is to keep these values uh, living in harmony, not in contradiction. Uh, and I do believe that instead of, politically, that instead of trying, you know, to get support from right-wingers, I believe that center-left in Israel should put on the table our vision, what we believe in, uh, saying that, uh, you know, supporting Israel, being an Israeli patriot, doesn't mean that we need to uh, give up our democratic values or our liberal values. This is about who we are. And this is basically the school of independence of the state of Israel. And therefore, I believe, and this is what I try to do in politics, to fight for these values, not and what happened in the last years is that those that believing in liberal values, those believing in peace, those, be those believing in democracy, were portrayed as cooperating with the enemy, thinking about the Palestinians, not about Israel. Uh, and uh, this is something that unfortunately, um, in a way, this is the success and uh, my criticism also on part of other leaders in Israel is that they were not willing to stand up and fight for these values. Do you think Israel can remain a democracy if, if there isn't a two-state solution? I believe that this is the nature of Israel. We, Which I, is the I, nature of Israel? Israel is a Jewish democratic state the nation state of the Jewish people with equal rights to all its citizens, without discrimination, uh, and we have 20% of Arab minorities living within Israel as equal rights citizens, and I believe that our responsibility is to keep them as equal rights citizens. Simultaneously, we have millions of Palestinians living, living in uh, Judea and Samaria, in the territories, for now without rights because they are not part of Israel. Israel didn't implement its sovereignty on the entire place. And therefore, the choice is between being one state, between Jordan River, Mediterranean Sea, with equal rights to everybody as a democracy. And the meaning is that it would be a kind of a binational state. I don't know what it would be, but it would not be the nation state of the Jewish people. The other choice that I would not accept as well is to keep our democracy. And this is something that I would not accept as well. And therefore, the only way to keep Israel as a Jewish democratic state is to give up part of the land and hopefully to reach peace with the Palestinians. Were you optimistic initially about the Arab Spring? Did you see the beginnings of genuine democracy in, in North Africa uh, and in parts of the Middle East? We live in a tough neighborhood, and those living in the Middle East cannot be very naive just, you know, looking at our uh, or different uh, states in the region, thinking that, okay, we are going now to live in uh, Europe. This is not the nature of the Middle East. Ever? But I think, no, I don't want to say ever. There is one thing that I, I, I try to convince different administrations in the United States since 2005, and this is important, especially in our region. Because what we see in our region is that you have a kind of a democracy in which, for example, terrorist organizations can participate in election. So take Hamas in the Palestinian Authority. They participate in democratic election, but it's an armed militia. See Lebanon, you have Hezbollah. This is a designated terrorist organization that on one hand is participating in election as a party. On the other, it's an armed militia. And I believe since democracy is not just, you know, the, the, the right to vote, it's a matter of values, I believe that there's a need to have a, a, an international code for elections for democracy. 
saying that democracy means that everybody who wants to participate in election need to choose between bullet or ballot. And uh, every party who wants to participate in election need to accept certain parameters, rules of law, rule of law, and the understanding that the monopoly of the use of force is by governments. And this is part of uh, uh, the understanding that democracy needs also to defend itself, because also in the past, and the horrific price that the Jewish people and Europe and the entire world paid was after democratic elections in the 30s in Germany. So what are you encouraged by? What cheers you up in the morning when you pick up your newspaper? in terms of the prospects and opportunities for democracy in or out of the Middle East? I am worried. I'm worried as a citizen of the world. I see these trends. And I feel that those center-left, not only in Israel, but uh, those believing in, in democratic values, um, should stand together because this is not just a local problem. And uh, we feel in a way, I felt in last uh, years or last months uh, in politics quite uh, alone. Mm. Uh, lonely, because you Lonely, yes. I felt lonely because I'm fighting for something that is becoming or that it's being delegitimized. And I know that there are others in different parts of Europe feeling the same. And we have also part in the United States feeling the same. This is why I really said I wrote an article saying liberals of the world tonight unite because this is something global. Because this is not only, uh, 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 it's an international change. And uh, different ideas, it's not a local idea, democracy. It was not invented here or there. Uh, it's part of, of, of a global understanding. And uh, for many years, uh, uh, and especially after the horrors of the Second World War, it was clear that we, we need to stick to these values. And these days, uh, because of different reasons, immigration plus technologies, plus uh, the world is changing. And uh, I believe that we should rewrite it in as, as a new vision for a young generation. Because for them, we are the establishment, the old guys, and they want to believe in something. But I, 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 we'll get on to younger people in a few minutes, but I, I, um, I would like to talk a little bit about technology and the role of the digital revolution and particularly social media and the yeah. internet in this descent into authoritarianism or, or illiberal democracy, whatever you want to call it. Has technology got much to answer for here? Well, there are different aspects of technology. Uh, one aspect is that it creates uh, an understanding that uh, what we used to have is going to change. So I'm, I'm talking about different professions, and uh, uh, this leads to fear. Uh, most people don't understand all the different kinds of technology, but they understand that this would replace their profession or their children's profession. Mm. So it's a new world. Uncertainty. 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 Anxiety. This is one. This Anger. is this is one thing. The other is that uh, social networks replace also the need to influence through, through elections. As an individual, you can influence through the social networks. So the idea that once in four years I can be influenced and vote for somebody or something that I believe in is now also changing. Do you? Are you, do you follow people you disagree with? Do you follow Palestinians or conservatives, people who you may respect but fundamentally disagree with? Uh, I'm trying to. By the way, I have con direct con I meet Palestinians, not, uh, not only following them, yeah. uh, because I believe in a discussion. But it's, about, it's not only about, it's about getting information. 
For many years, we used to have, you know, the press, television. Now, who knows who is the reality and what is new, real news, what is fake news? Can you see through it? Can you tell fake news? Uh, you know, it's funny, up to a moment. I, I hope so. I think so. <laughs> Have you sometimes no, but, been tricked? No, but, but I can give you an example. Just a few weeks ago, uh, I, in my WhatsApp, a friend of mine uh, sent me a tweet of one of my opponents in politics, by the way, and it was a horrific one, really. About you? No, it was not about me. It was not about me. Uh, but so on one hand, I said, okay, because it's something that is it's against this, what I got in, in, in uh, but I tried to, but I decided to check. So I entered into her Twitter. Yeah. And I discovered that it's not there. So, so. But I was the only one checking it. Just when she clarified that it's not her, it was clear that it's fake news. But this is, this is the way things are. And, and my understanding is that people want to believe in things that support their view anyway. So it's quite difficult to, to and we are after election campaign in Israel. It was horrific. Minister Livni, we're in Kansas City. I know you haven't been here before. You just arrived this morning. Um, you're here for the Albright Forum, which is, is, is this where liberals of the world unite? Part of them, anyway. Is that why you're here? This is why I'm here, but uh, I would like to show with you a story uh, about the first meeting that I was invited uh, by Madeleine Albright and uh, Steve Adley. And it was really uh, rewriting uh, the principles of democracy. And I was very uh, touched and proud that I was invited as the representative uh, coming from Israel to this meeting of leaders from all over the world. And I um, told my son, who just graduated Tel Aviv University Law School, and I told him, you see, your mother was invited to all these great leaders. And he was looking at me and he said, why do you think that you dinosaurs would sit in a room, write something, and this would interest my generation. And I said, what do you mean? And he showed me his iPhone. And these were the days in which in the United States there were rallies against um, um, a weapon after shooting at school. And mm. one, I think it was the a children's. teenager yeah. yes, who spoke there. And he showed her in, in his iPhone, and he said, you see, this is happening some, somewhere else in the world. It's not an Israeli problem, but she is touching me. And your generation needs to find out how to touch us. So I came to this gathering, and I said, okay, we should rethink, and we should think about the way we share our vision with young generation. Instead of talking and writing, let's think in terms of picture, Instagram, a hashtag. I mean, me too. Hashtag. Uh, uh, Facebook, networks, because without it, it would be another paper. We have our concerns, we are worried, we are speaking up, but it's not enough to speak up. Somebody needs to hear us. When you ask your son how to fix this stuff, what does he say? What's his solution? So he said, think about something that would create hope, that would be a vision that we can feel connected to. And uh, since this conversation, this is what I'm thinking about. Uh, what is the best way to, instead of being frustrated, Instead of, I mean, looking at Brexit and saying, uh, what's happening? Uh, people are taking stands that are extreme. It can, by the way, not only right wing, also left wing. All new ideas that create uh, enthusiasm. And 
we are those, you know, yeah, we've been there, democracy, we know what this is. So we need to rebrand uh, this we've... vision. I do believe in all uh, these values, but we need to wrap it in a manner that people would understand that we are thinking about them, that it's not a vague idea, uh, that you can be uh, your a patriot of your state, but yet uh, being open to the world and being part of the international community. The choice is not between being a citizen of your nation and uh, being a citizen of the world. This is not the choice anymore. And I believe that in order to do so, it's not just rebranding our values, it is also uh, uh, changing some of the systems, uh, uh, giving these safety nets uh, to those uh, who need them, that uh, uh, also in terms of economy, you cannot just speak in terms of, okay, uh, you know, um, uh, it would be just capitalism without a social sa uh, safety nets. We need to understand uh, why people are worried and to give answer to this without giving up our, uh, our values because otherwise they will not accept it. A lot of people though might listen to what you're saying about your son's generation and say, well, this is the I generation. They're narcissistic, they're indulgent. Oh no, you don't know my son. Is he a no, narcissist? No, not at all, not at all. He's truly worried about Israel, about the world. He's, uh, uh, he represents the same values that I believe in. He truly cares about the society. Uh, so not at all. He's not disconnected. He wants to be connected, but what he explained to me is that if I want to be connected to his generation, there are certain things that I need to understand what worries them. And it's not only about them. And if people are thinking about themselves, that's fine. So we should uh, uh, speak with them in an understanding what worries them. And if uh, 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 people are worried about uh, supporting their families, so we can turn, cannot turn a blind eye to this. We need to understand it. And, and part of the system is taking care of the people. And I think that the image of, of what happened after, you know, globalization and everything is that people feel disconnect. Being citizen of the world is vague. They need to be connected. It's about, you know something, I believe that it's about identity. It's about, it's about who you are. And I feel that when I'm speaking about who am I, it's being a Jew, it's being an Israel, it's being liberal. It's, it's part of who, it's part of me. But when others feel that in order to be, I don't know, um, whether it's American or other citizen of one state, meaning that they need to disconnect from being citizens of the world or disconnect from other values because they don't represent nationalism or patriotic manner, this is our problem and this needs to be solved. You can be uh, uh, part of your identity is also uh, believing in something that you believe in, your friends believe in, uh, the citizens of the society in which you live in believe this is part of who we are. And I believe that we are missing something on the way.